Hello everyone, glad to be here at Open Source Summit 2021 and today I'd like to talk to you about something quite relevant for this forum about open source for better observability. I'm going to talk about what observability is, about the three pillars, the signals, logs, metrics, traces and so on. Uh, we'll talk about the role of open source uh, and its success and challenges in this domain. Uh, then I'll cover the leading open source tools for logs, metrics, and uh, traces. And to wrap up, I'll discuss open telemetry and the unified vision for uh, observability. A word about myself. My name is uh, Dotan Horvitz. I'm a developer advocate at Logs.io. Uh, Logs.io is a SaaS platform for uh, cloud native observability that's based on uh, popular open source tools such as uh, uh, Prometheus, Elasticsearch, Kibana, Jaeger, and, and so on, that some of which we'll talk about in this, uh, in this conversation. Um, I'm also uh, an advocate of open source and the communities in general, and uh, uh, the CNCF in particular. I uh, co-organize a local uh, CNCF chapter in uh, Tel Aviv. So if you're around Tel Aviv, do join uh, one of our monthly uh, meetups. I also uh, run a podcast called Open Observability Talks. So uh, check it out. And in general, you can find me everywhere at Horvitz, H-O-R-O-V-I-T-S. So uh, if you find something, if you tweet something interesting out of this talk, do uh, tag me and I'll be happy to share. And let's start with a quick question. What do you think that is? And no, that's not the uh, coronavirus uh, imaging. Here's a hint. Well, these are the microservice architecture diagrams for Amazon and Netflix. Now imagine, what would, you, what would it take to monitor something like that? And indeed, monitoring cloud native uh, systems is hard. It's hard because we talk about highly distributed applications spanning tens and hundreds of nodes and services and instances, uh, systems that are very dynamic, ephemeral, spinning up and down and uh, you know, scaling in and out. Uh, we have additional layers and dimensions. You know, it's not just a bare metal and operating system. You have the uh, guest, guest OS and host OS and container and pod and namespace and uh, version deployment and uh, you know the Kubernetes control plane and so on. Uh, and not more layers. It's also additional dimensions uh, by which we monitor our system. So it's also a high cardinality system. And on top of all of that. Any typical system these days uses many third-party frameworks, whether open source or cloud uh, services, for its uh, SQL database and NoSQL database and the API gateway and the message broker and the HTTP proxy and you name it. And while we didn't write them, we still need to monitor all of these. So this is the landscape for monitoring today's systems. And indeed, when you go and ask people uh, what's the uh, uh, difficulty that they encounter running in production, this is, for example, from the uh, recent DevOps uh, Pulse uh, from uh, last year. That's a yearly DevOps uh, survey that, uh, that we run at logs.io. Um, and we asked specifically about running Kubernetes in production. The number one issue that kept on coming up was around monitoring and troubleshooting. So the problem is definitely uh, there and it's hard. And the way to deal with this is with observability. In fact, the very definition of cloud native systems uh, talks about systems that are observable. You can see here the uh, definition by the uh, uh, CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, but what is observability anyway? So the formal definition taken from control theory talks about the, a measure of how well internal states of a system uh, can be inferred, inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. And in software systems, these external outputs are essentially the telemetry that our systems emit, namely the metrics, the traces, and the logs. And people often refer to them as the three pillars of observability. 
So, and by the way, these are not the only ones. There are other signals uh, that people talk about like profiling and, and others, but these are the, the three main signals for uh, observability. And one important point to make uh, from the definition that we talked about observability is, again, a system that needs to be observable make it, make it, makes it very clear that observability is a property of the system. It's not something that you bolt on in the aftermath. It should be there from, from day one as part of the system design as a, as a first level citizen. And that's something important to note. We'll probably uh, talk about it more later. But let's go back to observability in plain English. Um, a much more useful definition that I like uh, for observability uh, for software systems is uh, the capability to allow a human to ask and answer questions, uh, which essentially means that the more questions we can ask and answer about the system, the more observable it is. Uh, and the reason I like this definition uh, much better is that it makes it very clear that um, observability in essence is a data analysis problem. We have lots of data from many types uh, and many sources. Uh, we talked about different uh, telemetry types, such as metrics, traces, logs, uh, profiling, and others, but also different sources. We talked about the, uh, uh, you know, the, you have the, the front end, uh, I don't know, maybe Node.js or, or Python uh, code. You have your back end uh, part, such as the, I don't know, Java or uh, C Sharp or something else. Uh, you have third parties that you use in your, um, uh, in your system, I uh, you know the, the SQL database and the uh, Kafka and the Redis and the whatever. And what we need is essentially the fusion of all this telemetry across types and across sources, which actually gives us true observability. And that's a very essential point that people tend to uh, uh, overlook. So it's definitely something that uh, you'll probably hear me uh, saying more than once. And now that we understand what uh, observability is and why we need it, uh, let's look at the three pillars uh, and see how they tell us the what, the why, and the where about our system. And uh, then we'll talk about the leading open source tools uh, around them. And let's start with metrics. Metrics is typically the entry point because metrics tell, tell us the what, what happened, uh, help us detect issues. For example, it could tell us that the service is down or that a certain endpoint uh, 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 suddenly is very slow to respond. And metrics are essentially a numerical uh, uh, data points. It could be counters, gauges, and others, but essentially, you know, numerical data points, uh, which are very efficient, of course, to collect, to process, to store, to aggregate. But on the other hand, they lack uh, context more information around what happened. Now, uh, the way it works, which is also what we'd be looking for in, in monitoring tools, uh, as we'll see later, is that systems emit metrics. And then there's a backend uh, that collects these uh, metrics, whether in pool or in push mode, uh, aggregates, calculates all sorts of uh, uh, aggregations, uh, averages, P99, P95, and so on, stores it in a time series database, and exposes a query language uh, for time series data uh, that we can draw these cool graphs that you can see here on the screen. Um, that's how it works. And typically, uh, metrics are uh, combined with alerting on events. So we can define things that are exceptional in our system. For example, uh, if a, a user uh, logged in uh, three times or more in sequence within I don't know, five minutes, alert me on that. Or if uh, an endpoint uh, takes uh, longer than 20 milliseconds to respond over a certain period of time, alert me on that. So we can define events on which you want to be alerted on. And you can have alerts also on, on uh, logs and, and other uh, telemetry types, but for metrics, that's the classic uh, uh, alerting. So metrics tell us the what, and then logs tell us the why, uh, help us diagnose the, uh, the issue. And that is thanks to the fact that logs are essentially um, uh, very rich in, in context. Essentially, that's the developer who wrote that piece of code, writes out what's going on in the code. Uh, so it's, it's very verbose, it's very rich, 
in, in information. On the other hand, uh, it's uh, textual and very verbose, which makes it uh, uh, more, uh, uh, takes up more storage space, more costly in terms of, of storage. So in a way, it's, it's the opposite of, of metrics. It has context, but less efficient to store. It requires um, to pass the incoming logs. You need full text indexing. Uh, with storage and query language to support ad hoc queries by any field that might appear in the uh, in the logs. So that's how it works. Again, what we'd be looking for also in tooling around uh, uh, log uh, analytics and management. So metrics tell us the what, logs tell us the why, and then traces tell us the where. That's a new kid on the block, and the question where. Um, is actually rather new. We, we, we were fine with logs and metrics for a long time, but today with microservice architectures, every request coming into uh, our system flows through a chain of interacting microservices. And then the question arises, where did the error occur? Where did the performance degradation occur? Where's the critical path? These are the sorts of questions that distributed tracing comes to answer. Uh, help us isolate the issues and uh, improve the performance of our system. And the way it works is that each um, call in our system, in its system call in our, in our chain, creates and emits a span for that service and operation. You can think about it as uh, structured logs, uh, which include the context, such as the start time, the duration, the parent span, and, and so on. Now, this context propagates between the calls uh, in the train, in the trace uh, uh, through our system. And then there's a backend that collects these spans, these logs uh, that my app uh, emits and reconstructs the trace according to causality. Uh, and then visualizes it and uh, analyzes it uh, visually. Typically, uh, what you can see here on the screen is the uh, a famous timeline view or the uh, Gantt chart that shows us how the uh, service A calls service B and, and, and so on, the, the sequence of calling. So that's on distributed tracing. So just to sum up, uh, we saw that observability is essentially the ability to ask and answer questions about our system and that the three pillars are metrics, logs and traces that tell us the what, the why, and the where, uh, respectively. And now that we understand uh, what's observability, let's see the role of open source in observability. After all, we're in Open Source Summit, that's what we're here for, um, and which open source projects lead the domain. But before we get to the specific projects used, I'd like to share with you three uh, important insights about uh, uh, the role of observability, open source in observability. The first insight is a very uh, uh, happy one. It's that open source is today uh, uh, the preferred path. It's uh, actually, you might say, it's the new norm. Uh, you can see several analyst firms here on the uh, on the screen indicating 60% of the organizations use open source uh, monitoring tools. Uh, by 2025, 70% will use uh, uh, open source uh, instrumentation uh, and so on. So it's definitely happening. Organizations choose open source and also the most commonly adopted tools are open source. That's uh, the number one conclusion actually from the CNCF's uh, uh, end user uh, technology radar uh, on observability was that uh, if you look at all the tools, not just open source uh, ones, you still see the top three, for example, being open source tools. And obviously that's not surprising that open source is key to observability because the open source community that created Kubernetes and uh, Cloud Native has delivered open source tools and standards to monitor them. And it's, it's very important, it's not just open source tools. Uh, standards, open standards uh, and open uh, formats uh, take uh, an important role. Things such as open metrics, open tracing, open telemetry that are emerging to converge the industry and uh, prevent vendor locking. And we'll talk about these uh, as well. So that's uh, insight number one. Insight number two is less favorable, and th that's that there is no consolidation in the observability space. 
um, in the same uh, CNCF uh, end user technology radar that I mentioned, uh, it was very clear that half of the companies uh, are using five or more tools. It's astonishing. And a third of them had experience with 10 or more. Uh, so this is a serious uh, problem of tool sprawl, essentially. And this is a challenge not just for you know, operating and managing many tools uh, as in other fields, but also it's a challenge for observability itself. Because as we said before, observability is a data analytics problem. And many tools create many data silos. And then we find ourselves very limited in our ability to ask and answer questions when they require correlation across different tools across different data silos. So it's a serious problem uh, for observability uh, space. And the last uh, insight that I'd like to share with you about open source uh, in observability is uh, the topic of relicensing of popular uh, open source that changes the landscape. In the past year alone, we've witnessed several relicensing moves uh, for leading open source projects moving to a more uh, restrictive license, uh, a copyleft license such as uh, uh, GNU AGPL or uh, uh, even to a non-open source license, non-OSI compliant uh, license such as the SSPL. Typically, this happens by a vendor that controls the project, not by a foundation. So we don't see that by the Linux foundation, uh, but uh, when a vendor is involved, it, it happens, tends to happen. Uh, and it could mean for, for the end user, it means that uh, the source code may very well still be available it, uh, and accessible, but you're restricted in your usage or modification of the open source, or you may even uh, need open to open source your own code uh, in some cases. Uh, and this, of course, pushes some users to look for alternatives. Uh, for example, other open source projects under the uh, Linux Foundation that can't consume uh, these uh, restricting uh, restrictive licenses, or even commercial companies such as uh, Google, uh, in, in the example here that you can see on the screen, who bans uh, use of AGPL, uh, uh, although it's an open source license. Uh, uh, Google open source says very explicitly on AGPL that the risk heavily overweighs uh, the benefit. So uh, the relicensing moves uh, definitely are changing the landscape. Most of them, again, the, certainly the ones from the past year are, are very fresh and the industry and the community are still trying to process and, and see what, what's going on. But it's definitely something that may change the landscape and, you know, uh, by next year's uh, talk, I may present a different landscape to you on, on this uh, same topic. So uh, just to summarize uh, the three insights, we see that open source is key uh, to observability, uh, which is uh, very good news. Uh, on the other hand, we see a challenge with the tool sprawl and the resulting uh, uh, issues with, with data silos. And we see the relicensing of uh, open source that changes the landscape. And now that we understand observability and we saw the role of open source, let's look at the leading open source tools. Uh, and funny enough, many uh, open source uh, projects around uh, observability are called open something, open X, uh, which causes uh, quite a bit of confusion. I, I even wrote a quick uh, reference guide to uh, address this confusion. So I'd like to go over uh, uh, the, the open sources according to the uh, pillars of observability, uh, the signals, and uh, see at least the, the leading ones. And we'll start as before with the metrics uh, and the leading uh, open source tool for uh, metric monitoring is uh, by far Prometheus, especially for cloud native systems. Prometheus is a, a project under the CNCF. It's in fact the second project to have graduated after Kubernetes, so it's quite mature. Um, and Prometheus provides quite a bit of the functionality we talked about before for metrics monitoring tools. First, it provides service auto discovery, which means that it can detect the different um, services and components in your uh, uh, system. Uh, and as we saw before, today's systems have so many of these with microservice architectures, with many third parties involved, uh, that being able to automatically discover these 
uh, targets in Prometheus terms is, is uh, uh, an, an exceptional benefit for uh, Prometheus. Then Prometheus uh, uh, performs metric scraping, so it pulls metrics off of these targets, um, uh, which again is uh, in pool mode is much more uh, friendly for uh, in these uh, levels of, of uh, distributed systems. Then Prometheus has a time series database for storing the time series, and it exposes a query language called PromQL for uh, querying the uh, time series data. So as you can see, it's quite comprehensive. Uh, and uh, again, being a, a sibling under the CNCF, it offers native integration with Kubernetes. So anyone running on Kubernetes has a very seamless uh, plug and play uh, experience with Prometheus, but it's more than just Kubernetes. Uh, Prometheus offers a vast ecosystem, both within the CNCF and other projects and tools uh, that support uh, uh, Prometheus. In fact, a key uh, um, uh, factor here is open metrics, uh, which is uh, another open source under the CNCF that has spun out of Prometheus. And open metrics uh, is the exposition format, the format for uh, uh, transmitting metrics off of systems that has become very popular. Um, uh, it's, uh, as I said, the standard uh, uh, under the CNCF uh, and uh, it's based on Prometheus uh, format, so it's pretty mature. And it's also proposed as a formal standard now under the IETF. But the most important thing is that the de facto it's been adopted by many, many common tools and frameworks that expose out of the box metrics using this format. So, you know, whether you use uh, Kafka or RabbitMQ or MongoDB or uh, I don't know, My MySQL or Apache or Nginx or Jenkins or and a GitHub or, I don't know, even, you know, cloud services, AWS, Azure and others, you're more than likely to see that they have it out of the box. Typically, you just need to uh, go to slash metrics and you can see that, uh, or just maybe turn it on in the configuration and it's there. And uh, uh, this large ecosystem is key, uh, as we said before, in, in dealing with such diverse and, and dynamic systems as we, uh, as we see today. Another open source uh, uh, that is uh, important to note in, in this context is uh, Grafana. Grafana is uh, not under the uh, CNCF, it's uh, uh, run by uh, Grafana Labs. And uh, Grafana is a visualization tool that uh, has a very good integration with Prometheus. It can, all, by the way, work with other uh, data sources, not just Prometheus, but it's very popular in the combination of, uh, with Prometheus. So Prometheus plus, plus Grafana is very popular and it offers very powerful visualization of the uh, uh, Prometheus data. Uh, one important update from uh, this year, from uh, April, is that uh, Grafana has been relicensed from Apache 2 uh, license to AGPL uh, version 3 uh, type of license, a copyleft uh, type of license by uh, Grafana Labs. Uh, which, again, uh, we talked about uh, the relicensing and the changes. AGPL is a uh, copyleft, is a, an infectious license in a way. Uh, so it's something that may uh, change the landscape. It's still rather fresh. So um, uh, many discussions around that, but definitely something to be aware of in the open source landscape. So we talked about metrics. Now let's talk about uh, logs. And the open source... Uh, um, stack that has been uh, most popular for log analytics and log management for many years uh, is what's known as the ELK stack or ELK stack, which stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. Uh, Elasticsearch is the core, it's the text uh, distributed data store uh, with full text indexing. Uh, it's based on Apache Lucene uh, text search engine uh, Java library. And it also exposes a Lucene query uh, syntax. Um, and you have also uh, Kibana, which is the visualization tool that goes along with Elasticsearch and allows uh, for uh, you know, uh, uh, creating dashboards and uh, ad hoc uh, querying with Lucene and so on. And uh, Logstash is there for parsing the incoming, uh, incoming data, ingesting it into Elasticsearch. Uh, an important update about uh, that uh, from uh, February uh, that both Elasticsearch and Kibana 
have been relicensed from Apache 2 to a non-open source license uh, SSPL uh, by Elastic BV, the uh, company behind uh, the project. Uh, which again stirred up a lot of discussion in the community uh, especially this even more than what we saw before with Grafana because this is a non-open source license um, uh, several motions have started the most significant one is uh, OpenSearch a new project that has spun out of uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana essentially a fork of Elasticsearch and Kibana uh, meant to keep them open source under Apache 2 license and keep them run by a community. Uh, there are several uh, um, companies backing it up. The most significant one is AWS that put a, has put a lot of effort in, uh, in this open source, also contributed its open distro for Elasticsearch, uh, open source plugins that before were plugins for Elasticsearch, now they're converted to uh, plugins for uh, rich plugins for uh, uh, OpenSearch. Um, Again, it's, it's a fairly young project. It just started after the, obviously, after Elastic's uh, uh, relicensing move. It's been GA'd uh, just uh, less than half a year. So it's very fairly young and um, there's yet to be proven to see that the community builds up around that, but definitely looking uh, promising. And I'm glad uh, to be part of this uh, project. Also, my company, Logs.io, uh, we see a lot of uh, um, importance in, in promoting this project and keeping uh, Elasticsearch uh, and Kibana open source, essentially. Um, another uh, open source that uh, uh, is relevant in this context and is uh, quite popular is Loki. Uh, Loki is a, a project uh, run by uh, Grafana Labs, uh, same as uh, Grafana and uh, other projects. Um, and Loki uh, is, is a bit different. It doesn't uh, uh, pass the incoming logs, logs or do full text indexing, uh, like most other uh, logging solutions. Instead, it indexes and groups log streams using the same labels uh, that are already used for uh, Prometheus. So, because of you know the interchange with uh, uh, Grafana and seeing the, uh, the the integration with Prometheus, uh, the the most emphasis is about the cross were easy cross-working with uh, the, the metrics data coming from Prometheus. So obviously it's more efficient uh, to scale and more uh, uh, tuned for your Prometheus, but uh, more limited uh, in its texture search. You, you, cannot, you can't arbitrarily ask about any field that is uh, within your uh, uh, log uh, data. So that's about Loki, and uh, as we said for Grafana, uh, same update for uh, Loki. Uh, Grafana Labs has relicensed uh, uh, Loki as well from Apache 2 to AGPL version 3. Um, so again, a fairly new uh, update that may uh, uh, impact uh, the landscape. And off to traces, uh, the third signal, and uh, here the open source uh, tool that uh, is uh, the most dominant one is Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger, is a, Jaeger Tracing is a project under the CNCF. It's a graduate project, uh, quite mature, with you know, a few dozen organizations using it in production. Um, uh, typically, uh, the full stack of Jaeger offers both uh, traces, uh, you know, SDK libraries and uh, Jaeger collector and a, um, uh, you know, a backend analytics tool and UI for querying the data and, uh, you know, visualizing it and analyzing it. Uh, typically, it works with, uh, in, in production at least, with uh, some uh, backend data store. It could be Elasticsearch or it could be um, uh, Cassandra or something else, but uh, uh, this is the typical setup. Um, and we'll talk about open, open telemetry later that may take some of these pieces off of Jaeger, uh, the, the, the tracers and the collectors, we'll talk about it later, but at least for now Jaeger offers all the suite of, of uh, capabilities as part of Jaeger project. Um, another open source project uh, that is important here is uh, Zipkin, it's a, a bit older uh, project, more veteran, but uh, still uh, common in, in organizations. Uh, there are also others like uh, Skywalking and, and uh, Tempo and others, but definitely Jaeger is the leading open source in the tracing domain. Um, 
I'd like to pause here and uh, make it uh, an important note uh, that, you know, merely having metrics, logs and traces does not guarantee observability. Many people think that, uh, uh, you know, that's what, you, that's what it takes and definitely not. As we said before, observability is a property of the system. It's not something that you bolt on uh, in the aftermath. It should be there uh, as a first level citizen. So I'd like to go over some uh, three common mistakes that I keep on seeing and how to correct them to make uh, uh, our systems observable. And the first one is <clears throat> using unstructured and ad hoc uh, uh, logging, you know, plain text, unstructured. Um, and, uh, you know, essentially the developer who wrote that piece of code, uh, the business logic just, you know, you know, threw out a, a string, you know, output a string containing all the information that uh, he or she knows about what's going on in the, in the business logic. And it may very well be uh, understood by that developer. It may be understood, you know, by uh, peer developers reading this log. But as we said, observability is a data analytics problem. We need to work at scale. We need to use uh, tooling to analyze, to correlate, to cross-reference. We can't rely on humans reading line by line massive amounts of data and analyzing them. And for that, we need to make sure that uh, our logs are structured. We need to, uh, you know, move away from plain text to some, uh, you know, JSON format, something that is machine readable, um, uh, having each and every field in its own, you know, uh, designated, uh, uh, separated field, uh, you know, containing requests, uh, you know, more uh, uh, metadata like request or transaction identifying to correlate traces to logs, we need to prioritize uh, the mass amount of, of information, you know, index valuable data. Um, also for metrics, by the way, a, a proposed correlation, uh, we'd like to include, for example, exemplars for metrics to provide more context for the metrics and enable drill down from metrics to traces. Uh, so this is first uh, best practice that I would uh, recommend. Second thing that I see is that even organizations that have metrics, logs, traces, the mindset is still, you know, the classic sysadmin mindset with relatively reactive monitoring and maintenance mode of work. And again, for data analytics problem uh, mindset, we need to work like data analysts proactively querying and getting the right insights from, from the system. And the third problem uh, is that people have uh, metrics, logs and traces, but each one in its own uh, silo. And as we said before, these silos create broken troubleshooting workflows and, uh, and the, the, the issue of tools sprawl that we talked about before. And if we want to have uh, observability, we need the fusion of all these signals. Uh, and that is what gives us true observability. And so we understand that we have the tools to analyze the different signals uh, and we understand that we need this fusion of uh, all the signals. Uh, but how do we actually go about generating and capturing this telemetry? So the vision is nice, but the practice is that each programming language has multiple libraries for logging and for metrics and for traces. Uh, we saw that organizations use five tools or more, and each one of these tools and vendors has its proprietary agents for instrumentation and collecting. You need, you know, the client libraries for Jaeger and for Datadog and for Splunk and for Zipkin and, and so on. So how do you go about, you know, making this vision of capturing telemetry data across observability? And this is where open telemetry a project comes into the picture. This is a project under the CNCF. Uh, in fact, it's a, it's a merge, uh, the result of a merge of uh, open tracing and open census. So uh, if you use any of these, this is the, the future path for, for these projects. And open telemetry is a, uh, a framework for generating and capturing telemetry data, especially from cloud native uh, systems, um, across traces logs and metrics. 
and Hotel, by the way, uh, nicknamed Hotel, uh, has been adopted by all the major vendors, all the monitoring tools, all the cloud providers. So it's definitely converging the industry around it. So what does uh, Hotel uh, provide us? Uh, OpenTelemetry uh, provides a unified set of uh, vendor agnostic APIs, SDKs, and tools uh, for generating and collecting uh, telemetry data uh, from your systems and then uh, you know, exporting them uh, to uh, any uh, backend uh, tool of your choice. You want to work with Prometheus, you want to work with Jaeger, you want to do Zipkin or any other, just export to whichever tool you want. So essentially, you have uh, uh, for, in, for instrumenting your application, OpenTelemetry offers a single API and SDK per language that is based on a unified specification across the languages. Um, and then that's for instrumenting your application so that the application generates and emits uh, the telemetry data, you know, logs, traces, metrics. And then for collecting the telemetry, uh, Otel provides a collector uh, component that uh, receives can receive multiple uh, protocols and then it uh, processes and aggregates the data, does all sorts of uh, on the fly uh, on the fly calculations and optimizations and uh, you know sampling and so on and then exporting it uh, to your backend of choice. Another important uh, uh, element that uh, OpenTelemetry offers is OTLP, uh, OTL uh, uh, protocol for transmitting. So uh, it also aims to uh, create a unified protocol uh, across the different uh, uh, signals and create a standard uh, and format for, for these. So, and, and it's important to note the collector can receive multiple formats, not just OT, uh, OTLP. It can, you know, if you have a Prometheus uh, format, if you have uh, you know, Jaeger format, Zipkin format, whatever, it can ingest these, it can receive these. Uh, nonetheless, uh, OTL as a project does uh, offer uh, also the OTLP protocol as a unified protocol. Another important note that I'd like to make is that um, open telemetry is not a single, you know, monolithic uh, uh, project. In fact, it's, um, it's made up of multiple projects and, and uh, working groups that work on the different uh, uh, vectors of this humongous and very ambitious project. So, uh, for example, the uh, specification for distributed tracing is already in GA, uh, but the specifications for metrics and logs are not yet are, are pre-GA, for example. And if you look for the uh, SDKs, then you may find the, you know, the Java SDK may be already in GA, but uh, another language may not be GA. So uh, it's important to note that uh, when you go about starting your journey with OpenTelemetry, you need to first understand which stack you're interested in, which programming languages, which signals your, your, your systems emit, and what, what exactly you need out of Otel, and then check the status of the different uh, you know, components that you actually need out of uh, uh, OTEL. Uh, and, and I wrote a um, uh, basic, uh, uh, you know, guide to uh, open telemetry. You have the URL here on the screen. So if you uh, are in your first steps to uh, open telemetry, I hope that this guide will give you the overview of the different components, the state of different things, and obviously the links to where to find the up-to-date statuses and answers to uh, to the drill down on the specific ones that you're interested in so if you find it useful uh, definitely uh, go to uh, logs.io slash learn slash open telemetry dash guide um, i hope you find it useful and, and give me feedback if you uh, lack something i'd be glad to enhance it so that's about uh, open telemetry and now i'd like to summarize uh, what we've seen Modern systems are hard to monitor, and we need observability. We understand that very well by now. Open source is gladly the new norm in observability. Uh, we see open source tools such as Prometheus and Elasticsearch and Jaeger and others uh, that has become, have become sorry, uh, uh, de facto standards uh, in the industry. We also saw uh, relicensing of uh, you know, popular open source tools that is changing the landscape so things uh, may very well change uh, in the coming year uh, based on that uh, 
And we also saw that there's a severe tool sprawl problem that, you know, companies are, uh, you know, running multiple tools, uh, which tends to create data silos and broken uh, workflows, essentially. And what we need is to bring all of that, all of the telemetry data uh, in one place, take down the silos and be able to effectively slice and dice and correlate the data and gain insight into our system, which is the essence of uh, observability, of course. We also saw that uh, open, open source standards such as open telemetry and open metrics are converging the industry. Uh, help prevent uh, uh, vendor lock-in and bring us a step closer to a unified uh, observability uh, vision. Uh, especially, we've seen that on the side of generating and collecting the data uh, uh, and emitting, you know, with, with these projects. And I expect, personally, that we'll be seeing more such efforts for unified uh, observability to address uh, also other parts beyond generating and collecting data, also around data storage and querying and uh, uh, correlation, exemplars and similar. So uh, the future looks bright for uh, open source uh, movement in observability. And uh, with that, I'd like to uh, thank you very much for listening. If you have any feedback uh, or any questions, uh, feel free to uh, uh, catch me on the Q&A or on the uh, office hours on the, uh, or just, you know, uh, reach out to me at Horovitz, H-O-R-O-V-I-T-S. I'd be more than happy to uh, follow up, to answer questions and to uh, get your thoughts on the topic. So I'm Dotan Horovitz and thank you very much for listening. <laughs>